Sonic Lab TV. Hello, welcome to Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Universal Audio UAD2 satellite. This is an external box which is packed full of DSP, Shark DSP chips. In fact, this is the quad core version which has four of them in there. And what they are is highly specialized audio signal processing DSP chips. They run a specific set of plugins that are written by Universal Audio and their partners, things like EQs, compressors. Uh, they're very good on the sort of analog and uh, vintage emulation side. And they enable you to run a whole bunch more than you would ordinarily be able to run on your host computer. So it's an external DSP platform, if you like. I've never used any Universal Audio stuff, although they have been in the market for a very long time, starting out on the PC, uh, PCI card. Uh, the UAD one was uh, was around years ago. So uh, let's take a look and see what it's got to offer. So I should mention that this is a Firewire device. It's got Firewire 800 and 400, and at present it is only available for Mac, as far as I know. Uh, it is also only available for 10.6 and above. So if we just open up the box, let's see what we've got in here. FireWire 800 cable, and here's the box. It's a very slim looking little device. Let's take it out. It looks a bit like it's actually got a PCI adapter card in it and they put a case around it, but I'm not sure if that's the case. Uh, there's the front. I think this lights up nicely. Around the back we've got Firewire 400, two Firewire 800, so we've got a through, power switch and external, so it's obviously not bus powered. 12 volt external power supply with uh, caps, a nice brochure for all of the Universal's tasty, Universal Audio's tasty products including their hardware and software. So first thing we need to do is download the installer from the UAD website. The latest version just come out as of September 2011 is version 6. This adds OSX Lion support plus native RTAS plugin support which removes the need for a, a bridge which used to run in before. I'm running this on 10.6.8 by the way, which at the moment I still think is probably as far as one should go with OSX updates until they sort out some of the compatibility problems with other software. When I run the installer, I'm given the option to install RTAS, audio units and VST and optional compatible mono plugins. I've also got the option to uh, install driver for UAD1 card if I happen to have that on the system. And once that's installed, I have a powered plugin tools folder which has a UAD meter and control panel application. Launching this gives me access to a number of different parameters and views of the configuration of the Universal Audio card. Stuff like system info, which tells me how, many, how much DSP usage I've got going on, what plugins I've got installed. I have the premium plugin package. Uh, this was an offer that was running during the time that I got this for review. Runs till the 30th of September. It adds the Manly Massive Passive, EMT250 plate and the Studio A800 tape saturation. Also introduced with version 6 is the Ampex ATR102 tape recorder emulation. This is a half inch mastering machine that many, many classic albums were mastered onto. I can also activate any of the other plugins for a fully functional 14 day demo. Additionally, I can monitor and limit the amount of firewire bandwidth used by the UAD1 and also see how much is used by another device. In this case, it's the Mackie Onyx Blackbird, which is using 24% of the available firewire bandwidth. Then I, what I need to do is go to My Universal Audio, create an account, and then it shows me what authorizations I've got for my particular hardware. I've got the UAD Quad Premium Plugin Promotion Package, which gives me these plugins pre-authorized, which means I can use them without any extra cost. There are a whole bunch of other ones that I can purchase and activate via the control panel. Then it's just a question of downloading an authorization file, which I save to my system, and then I drag that onto the UAudio control panel. It authorizes the plugin for use on my system. It's really that simple. Right, so here I have a basic drum session in Reaper. Uh, it's really quite straightforward. I've just got kicks, snare, 57, overhead left and right, a couple of Tom mics, and then I've got an overhead bus, which I'm using to compress the overhead left and right, uh, and a, an additional squash bus, which I'm not using, and then a plate. Uh, at the moment, I'm bypassing the UAD plugs, which is a handy feature. Now I can bring them all in together. It doesn't sound that special without, but now. 
starts to sound like a real drum kit. So let's see what I've got going on. If I take the snare drum, uh, sorry, the kick drum, I'll just uh, go through that quickly. I've just got a basic gate, which is the spilt in one. Then I'm also using the Studer 800 uh, tape saturation plugin to give it a bit of woof. Then I'm using uh, the UAD CS1, which is like a channel strip, which I think is really supposed to be for vocal, but I really like the EQ and the compression on it. Sounds um, really nice, got a little bit of compression going on there and I've EQ'd up the, the bass drum. Then I've got uh, this SPL Transient Designer, which is something I've got on demo. It's brilliant, it's uh, an emulation of the SPL Transient Designer. It allows you to so bring in, emphasize the attack and sustain proportion. With this, I'm using it to bring out the sort of woof of the kick. Then finally, I've got a massive passive, which is one of the most hungry DSP uh, plugins that I've actually got on the system to add a bit of extra um, bottom end to the bass drum. I'm not sure if you're gonna hear that uh, on this system. Now if I take it out of solo, we can hear what's going on there. On the snare, I've got several plugins here and uh, I'll just quickly solo the plate nice sounding reverb that and that's the uh, UAD EMT 250. Finally on the master bus uh, I've got the SPL transient designer on the kit. If I swap a few things over I've got 1176 uh, in and sort of glues it together very nicely. Lovely sounding compression. Uh, I've also got a demo of the uh, SSL G bus compressor which everybody seems to love. I'll bring that in. Really like the quality of that actually. And then finally, uh, SPL Transient Designer, which is not plugged in at the moment, but you can hear the effect that it's having. Really brings out the smack. So if I just go to the UAD card, you can see with those plugins, I'm using 38%. Now if we take a more detailed look, I'm actually running 17 plugins there. The massive passives are really quite CPU hungry, so uh, they do eat up quite a lot. Uh, I've got a total system latency of 576 samples, 13 milliseconds. I'm also using only a small portion of the available Firewire bus. Right, I just want to show you a couple more effects to show it's not all about compression and EQ. Uh, what I've got here is a polysynth. And I'm running that through this Roland Stroke Boss CE1, which is a classic kind of chorus ensemble pedal from the 70s. It has a very unique sound. You'll probably hear it all over some of the early Goldfrap stuff. It really kind of widens up synth pads. And if I just unmute, you'll be able to hear. That sound there just has a real sort of uh, lushness that you just don't hear in a lot of chorus pedals. And I've also got a Roland's RE201 model here, which is a great little um, addition. The, the classic tape echo from, uh, well, you know, you'll, you'll recognize it everywhere. It's pr primarily used in dub. A lot of trip hop and stuff used it as well. Uh, if I just bring it up to a slap back and uh, bring that limiter in, play the drums through it. Take the intensity down. Listen to the spring. Got some real classic sound there. You get that real distortion breakup that you can only get with a Space Echo. So another nice model there. So I was actually really impressed with these emulations. I think UAD and their partners have done a fantastic job of making these great emulations. I mean, even down to the amount of noise that they can introduce into uh, any sort of signal path. The one thing that we need to do at this point is say that this is not a real-time system, i.e. you can't really put these across live inputs or virtual instruments. Well, you can, but there's quite a lot of latency. But that's not really what this system is about. It's about mix down. And as such, it's got an enormous number of tools available for it in terms of plugin bundles, individual plugins, for getting just that sort of creamy vintage sound. As far as price goes, it comes in a variety of different packages. There's the Satellite Duo, which features two Shark chips. That is 929 UK pounds, uh, 11,49 US dollars. The quad, which has four shark chips, which is what we've been looking at, comes in at 1549 US UK pounds and 1899 US dollars. 
UK prices include VAT. These are full retail prices. You're probably going to find them about 30% cheaper uh, on the street. Finally, the last package is called the Omni, and that has the Quad plus 50 bundled plugins plus an extra voucher of 100 bucks. And that comes at a whopping £4,559 or 5625 US dollars. One limitation I've noticed is when I want to bounce this down to the final destination, I'm only going to be able to get 1 to 1.2 times real time. So you can't rush through it in the same sort of speed that you can with perhaps all native plugins. I could get up to 8 or 9 times real time for that kind of bounce. Now that I've spent a bit of time with this system, I must say it is a very compelling setup. And it's not surprising really, because in many cases, the boffins at Universal Audio have got together with the people who actually made this gear, got hold of their golden units and tested with their cooperation to get the best emulations they possibly can. Now this makes these plugins a little bit more expensive than some perhaps other ones. Uh, and in some cases, these are the only place you can get these particular emulations. But in my opinion, it's a price worth paying. The only downside really is, certainly with the satellite Firewire system, it's not available to PC users. You're going to be stuck with the PCIe version only, which is just as good, but is in a slightly different format. That works for Windows too. As far as I'm concerned, now that TC PowerCore, which was the only other DSP accelerated system outside of Pro Tools HD TDM available, Universal Audio UAD2 is pretty much the only game in town.